Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, buenos dias, buenos tardes, buenas noches, whenever you are watching this video. I do hope you enjoy it. This is spring. We finally made it. This is March 2022, and we have been preparing months for this season. This is going to be our March vlog. This is also going to be our early spring vlog as well. We've got a lot to show you. We've been adding some things. We've been taking away some things. We've been propagating some things. We've been doing some experiments that are working. I can't wait to show you that. The trees are blooming. The fish are swimming in the pond. We've got a lot to show you. The birds are chirping. The sun is out. We are definitely warming up. We've got a lot to show you. We've got 25 now fruit trees, grapevines, blackberries. You can see Debbie right there. She's gonna go along with us. Grab a snack, grab your favorite beverage, and let's have some fun. So first off, I wanna show you what we did here. Look at this thing. This is our four-year-old Moringa tree, and we finally pruned it. We pruned it down to a manageable height so we can harvest off of it. This tree was about 20 feet tall, and we just couldn't reach anymore. If you look at our other videos, I'll leave that link in the description. Leave that link right there of our previous orchard tour from last month where you can see this tree was over 20 feet tall, 20 feet wide, and we just couldn't reach those branches anymore and harvest our Moringa leaves. You can see these leaves, they are 100% edible and they kind of compare a little bit to arugula. If you like arugula, like in your salads, they are very tasty and very nutritious. They've got all kinds of vitamins and minerals including calcium, there's some protein in there. This is called a miracle tree, and it's in our front yard, and we just love it. It blooms all year round. It goes a little dormant in the wintertime, but it does handle our cold temperatures pretty well, and obviously it does very well during the summertime is when this thing puts on exponential growth. This thing will probably grow another 10 feet during this growing season. That's our Moringa tree. And then next over here is our Dapple Dandy Pluot. This one's just starting to wake up. Just starting to wake up on these lower branches. And we are hoping for some fruit this year. We're gonna let this thing fruit for us. Uh, it is definitely mature enough. And it's got some nice, strong growth down here on the rootstock. And we are hoping for some fruit. Uh, this thing should be opening up pretty soon. And we are looking forward for some pluots. This is a plum apricot hybrid. That's our dapple dandied pluot right here in the desert southwest of Arizona. Now if you like bees and you like rosemary, may I kindly suggest you get a rosemary bush. This stuff is a bee attracting machine. And we've got about 20 of these things all around our house. In fact, we've got a whole row of it right here on our walkway. And this thing is always just full of bees. It's still a little early in the morning, but as you can see here, bees are already getting right at it just as the sun starts hitting it and we just love it this is our rosemary and as we head back here in our the corner of our orchard you can see we've got quite a few fruit trees back here there's a total of seven fruit trees back here and I want to start with our Pomona Sweet Lemon. This Sweet Lemon is about, this will be the fourth year growing. The first two years this thing was in the ground. It survived two of the hottest summers on record here in Arizona. And it didn't, it produced fruit, but the fruit just dried up and fell right off. So we really haven't had a whole lot of uh, harvests off of it. But this year we did get six lemons. And you can see right there. We've got still one left. These are very sweet lemons. They are delicious. That's our Pomona sweet lemon. And you can see it's just starting to open up with our blossoms here. And we've got flowers all over the place. We prune this in late summer. There's another blossom right there. We prune this in late summer so that we can get that fall flush. And I think we're probably gonna get about 100 lemons off of this tree. This is a fourth year in the ground. And this thing is just covered in new growth and flower blossoms. It's on a dwarfing rootstock, and that's probably pushing the 10 feet. I'm six foot four, and that's probably an eight foot reach. And so that's that's about as tall as this thing's gonna get. Who knows? It may get up to 15 feet. We'll see what the dwarfing rootstocks look like in a few years. 
but that's our Pomona sweet lemon. Well, they said you can't do it, but we're doing it. And it is here in our backyard. And this is an ultra dwarf honey crisp apple. Yes, honey crisp apple in the desert southwest of Arizona. When we bought this tree a couple years ago, it only had six branches on it. And this is just after that second year's growth. And you can see that is probably pushing the seven, seven foot mark. And it will be waking up in probably around May, sometimes late May. This thing needs a ton of chill hours, so it stays dormant as long as possible. But you can see all the, after we pruned it during the summertime, it pushed out these little fruiting spurs. And this thing is just covered in these little fruiting spurs all over the place. There's another one. I'm hoping every single one of these ends has fruiting spurs on them. And if we can get a honey, one honey crisp apple, we can call that a success here. Growing zone 9B, that's our honey crisp apple. So our honey crisp apple is our Santa Rosa plum. You can see it is just starting to wake up right now. We've got some little bitty little flowers. We haven't pruned it yet, but we are gonna be pruning it because it's gonna be waking up pretty soon. Good morning, Debbie. So we've got Santa Rosa plum growing right here. And this will be the first summer in the ground. We planted this in the fall 2021, and this is now March in 2022. Right next to it is our pineapple guava. That one was pretty scrawny when we got it a couple years ago, but it is really doing well. We pruned it down to two scaffolds, and that's gonna be growing exponentially this year. And right next to it is our strawberry guava. Both of these are non-self-pollinating, so they're gonna be helping each other pollinate, and hopefully we get some fruit off of it this year. We are looking forward to some guavas here in Arizona. Here next to our guavas, we've got our common fig. This thing is still dormant. It is just starting to wake up. We did not prune it yet, but we are going to, and we're gonna actually try to propagate it. We're gonna be clipping some of these branches that are close to our, our air conditioner because we want proper airflow growing next to a wall like this. We're not having any problems at all getting fruit harvests off of it, but you can see all these little black tags that's where we're going to be pruning some of these branches so that we keep upward growth. But that's our common fig, and it is still dormant here. So our common fig, we've got all kinds of peppers. These are all red bell peppers. They are just starting to ripen. And then we've got jalapenos here. Look what the jalapenos are doing. They're turning yellow, and we've had them before, and they actually turn really sweet. These are sweet jalapenos. They are absolutely delicious, and they are just taking off right now. We've got some Anaheim chilies. They're turning yellow also. And we've got some red bell peppers in here as well. They are looking mighty delicious. I think we're gonna eat these today in our salad. There's some more Anaheim chilies down in here. These things are spicy, but they are sweet and delicious. These are our Anaheim chilies. And we've got some, we got some volunteer red leaf lettuce. These are all just little seedlings that have dropped from previous years. Yeah, we're just going to let them grow and we're going to munch on them. In fact, I'm going to munch on one right now. These are delicious. These are red leaf lettuce growing just kind of all over the place. They grow kind of like a weed. But, man, that's a nutritious weed. Oh, well, yeah. That is tasty. Not bitter at all. Get some red leaf lettuce and eat it while it's still young. Next to our air conditioner, I'm telling you, you can grow anything in your backyard. Wonderful pomegranate. That's the variety is wonderful And this thing is waking up and we are hoping for some flower blossoms on this thing and then hopefully some fruit off of it this year This will be this will now be the second summer in the ground. We planted this in the fall 2020 And we have not pruned it yet And we want to do it as a tree style, but I think we're gonna do that in the fall We're just gonna let this thing grow and get that rootstock very established there's your wonderful pomegranate. We got that in Home Depot a couple years ago. We haven't had any fruit off of it yet, but yet is a relative term. We hopefully will be getting some fruit off of it this year. But that is our wonderful pomegranate growing right here in a very sunny spot next to our air conditioner, next to our house. No problem. To so our Anaheim chilies is our sweet basil. You saw in the other video where I pruned this, and this thing is just starting to wake up. It did really well during the winter time. We did have some freezes and we covered this thing up. We did lose, looks like one little side branch here. Just kind of got froze. Maybe it was exposed to the air. In fact, you can see the frost, the freeze burn right there. This one didn't make it. 
and this one didn't look like it made it but the, the other two looks like they're doing very well and they're actually starting to flower I think I might keep some of these to flower they do go a little bit bitter but as soon as you trim it and it puts out new growth that's when you start getting that sweet basil again but we do want to get some seeds out of these because we want to propagate it and grow some more basil here these things grow like a weed I'm telling you they can handle full summer Sun here in the desert southwest growing zone 9b and here's just another look at our Pomona sweet lemon look at all the flower buds these pink ones are very distinct for lemons lemons put out a nice little pink flower there's some more there and look at all the ends of these we did fertilize this in February and we are already seeing quite a bit of green already we fertilized it with blood meal and bone meal and I'll leave that link right up there to show you how we fertilized just this corner right here with blood and bone meal and things are really starting to take off nicely now all right let's move on over to the other trees hopefully you can see it. it's a little early in the morning and the Sun is contrasting everything but this is our golden door set or Dorset Golden, however you want to call it. It's just starting to wake up. And it looks like it's already starting to flower. We've already had some bees out here pollinating. And you can see the other, you can see the other blossoms back in there. Hopefully we get those pollinated and hopefully we get at least one or two apples off this tree. It is ready to go. And it is starting to wake up. We're gonna get some serious growth out of this tree. Next to our golden door set is our Florida Prince Peach. The other video from last month you saw this thing in full bloom and the bees just pollinating it and looky here we got some little peaches we thinned it down to about one peach per branch These Florida Prince peach trees can handle a lot of fruit they are heavy producers and they are fast growers they're one of the best peach trees you can get if you can find a Florida Prince peach here in Arizona or in the desert southwest get one because you will not regret it. These Florida Prince peaches are one of the best peach trees you can grow here in Arizona or in the desert southwest, especially California or in, anywhere in growing zone 9B, anywhere in the world. These peach trees do really well in full sun. They are an early variety, so they one of the first to bloom and they will be harvesting in May. So we're gonna watch these peaches grow day by day, week by week. That's our Florida Prince Peach. Our last orchard tour, we have installed this baby gate. We did this ourselves. We cemented it into the ground because we've got a one-year-old and she is crawling and getting ready to walk and explore. And we don't want her having any accidents falling into our koi pond. We've had this koi pond here in our house for over five years. We've got some mixed koi and some goldfish in here. These goldfish are almost a foot long. And we love using this water to fertilize a lot of our trees. We do either pump it out or just put it in our watering can. You've seen that in other videos of how we water all of our fruit trees with that pond water. Trees just love it. And right next to our pond is our Nagami kumquat. These Nagami kumquats are technically the world's smallest orange, but man, they are tasty. We planted this in the pot in November and we are trying to eat it as fast as we can because we want this thing to flower and hopefully produce a lot more fruit. These Nagami kumquats are very heavy producers and we are just loving it. They've got a little tiny seed inside. Let me get a bite real quick. Oh yeah, these things are delicious. There's a the little tiny seed right there. You can either swallow them or spit them out. But the funny thing is about these Nagami kumquats is they're kind of opposite. So the rind itself is sweet and delicious and then the inside is tart these things are delicious in fact as we continue the tour i'm gonna grab a couple more off this thing we gotta eat these things up so this thing can start focusing its energy on flowering so we can get more all right let's move on so i mentioned in the beginning of this video we're doing some experiments and it looks like things are starting to take off. We got some scion wood from some friends and we are grafting some Saturn peaches and it looks like the graft took. That's awesome. And then we've also got our red barren peach 
you saw us pull that out from the Florida Prince peach hole because it was just not doing so well but we did want to keep some of the branches and you can see we've got the graft looks like it took starting to push out some new growth so we've got a red baron we've got our Saturn peach on a desert gold peach tree so we've got a three-in-one peach tree now this is awesome we we're really excited about this you can see we've heavily pruned this thing we've probably pruned four or five feet off of this thing and we are hoping for some really good fruit development this year you can see it's just starting to wake up in fact here's another red baron graft that we did and it is already waking up I don't see any flower buds but I'm fine with that we want this thing to grow nice and strong so this is gonna be a red baron Saturn and desert gold peach so later this summer when we have more red baron peach branches to graft I'll make a video and show you how we do that how easy it was for us to graft our own branches right onto an existing peach tree this will be the fifth year now here in the ground and it is doing well we are growing obviously right next to a wall we're not having any problems growing our fruit trees right next to a wall we just prune accordingly and we got about 100 peaches off this last year and we are looking forward to the same but yeah it looks like all the red barren peach grafts are all taking that's wonderful this is going to be great i can't wait to see more fruit growing off this thing and it's funny to see like all the little grafts they're all waking up before the actual tree is so that's interesting to me but we should be getting some blossoms off this thing in the next few weeks that is our desert gold peach and right down here you saw us planting these these are our waddell pears they are just first year's graft and they are doing really really well we will not let these things fruit we want these things to grow we want them to grow fast when i say them i'm talking about we've got two of them we've got two waddell pears and these are our first year's graft we got these at rsi growers in glendale arizona and reed at rsi growers is a master at grafting fruit trees on arizona appropriate rootstocks those are our waddell pears next to it it is just starting to wake up also this is our katie apricot and she is just starting to wake up right now you can see the little little leaves here just starting to pop out hopefully we'll get some flower blossoms on these we did prune it uh, this was last year's growth we trimmed it down to just a couple nodes God, it is just starting to wake up looks like Debbie's having a good time morning Debbie and we're heading over to our pot section we have got a lot of plants in pots just like that Nagami kumquat we've got our plumerias this one never this one actually didn't go dormant this year but this one did and this one's got a red flower and it is just starting to wake up these are our plumerias we're growing here in the desert southwest these are our tropicals you can see daisy going to town on the catnip in here she just loves that catnip and you saw in our last video these things were just starting to sprout this is our salad bowl that is arugula spinach and red romaine lettuce and we are just going to be enjoying these things we've got hundreds of these little sprouts these are all baby lettuces and they are perfect for eating right now oh wow these are so good just a nice little salad addition right next to our salad bowl is our Pakistani mulberry. I don't know if this one is a female or a male. I'm not seeing any fruiting out of this tree yet. So I'm thinking it's probably just a male. But this Pakistani mulberry was planted by a bird, if you know what I mean. I picked this thing up out of my parents' backyard in Glendale, where there are a lot of mulberry trees. But if it's not a, a female mulberry, male mulberries tend to have a lot of pollination, a lot of hyperallergenic pollen and we don't want that we just want the females for producing fruit but you can see this one is waking up nice we're just going to let this thing grow hopefully in the late late summer early fall we'll be able to graft a female scion of any kind of mulberry really we do definitely do want mulberries here in our backyard and over this is our blue corn it is growing so much we can almost hear it grow it thing probably grows at least an inch a day at least it is just taking off and it's in a pot these things are taken off in a pot we did fertilize them with blood meal and bone meal and man since then they are just taken off 
and you can see we even mulch we even mulch the pot and it does really well that's our blue Indian corn and right next to it we kind of ran out of seeds but these are radishes and radishes are awesome because they are one of the fastest harvesting plants you can grow if you're just starting out with gardening get yourself some radishes 28 days from seed to harvest in fact you can see the radish right in there but we're not gonna let we're not gonna pull these we're not gonna eat these I want this one to because we did run out of seeds we want this one to mature flower and produce more seeds that way we can propagate more radishes and we don't have to go to the store and buy any more we can just keep reusing the same same radish plant and right here in the corner we've got our tropic sweet apple this tropic sweet apple is already flowered I've got a video on that I'll show you right here And I think we've got some apples that are just starting. I think that one got pollinated. And I can see just a little round, little round guy there. So I think we might have one apple on that one. I'm hoping for the best. I know we're not supposed to let these things fruit because if this thing fruits a ton, the branches are just gonna sag like that. But I think we're gonna be okay with just one or two apples on this little tiny tree. This is our first year in the ground. We planted this in October. We got this from RSI Growers, again, in Glendale. And these things are ready to rock and roll with some exponential growth. I did defoliate this tree. I'll leave that link right up on top. And why we want to increase dormancy and chill hours with our apple trees and all of our other deciduous fruit trees. That is our Tropic Sweet Apple. Again, we are doing quite a bit of experiments back here. We are trying to propagate our rose bush. And you can see I've got a little cup here. And I took the outer edge of the stock here and I planted in some peat moss put some rooting hormone on the stock covered it up and I'm watering it and hopefully in a couple more weeks we'll be able to get some roots out of this thing clip it and then have another rose bush that's what we're crossing our fingers for and that's what we're hoping for but that's our experimentation of propagating rose plants rose bushes and we're also did some other trimmings you can see where we pruned here we kept these prunes and we put them in some potting soil. You can see these prunes. Wherever you prune, that's where you're going to get some new branches out. So those are our rose bushes. So you stuck around this long, why don't you give this video a nice like. If you haven't already, subscribed, follow us. Watch all these plants grow successfully here in the desert southwest of Arizona. And let's go check out what's inside the mulch bin. Oh yeah, all kinds of goodies in here. You can see what we're putting in our mulch bin is just table scraps. You can see all the lemon rinds and the orange rinds, chunks of broccoli, eggs, sticks, all kinds of cardboard and paper, coffee grounds. There's all kinds of goodies in here. That's what we put in our mulch bin and that thing just decomposes and that's going to be a heavy nitrogen source. We are going to be using that in the fall. So back here in our vineyard, you can see everything's nice and pruned pruned back heavily we've got a video on all that as well and down here this is our crimson princess grape we just planted it and she is just starting to wake up just in time they can handle the full heat no problem at all and they're a very low chill hour maybe about 100 chill hours and here in the desert southwest we get about 300 and right next to it we are propagating looks like some of them took this is our red flame grape that we are propagating from this plant we pruned this thing back this thing had like 20 feet of really small pencil growth and looks like we did get one successful plant you know what there's another one right there there's a bud right there getting ready to pop so it looks like we got a couple of them that were very successful so that's awesome we've got two more red flame grapes and right between these two is our Chester blackberry this is a thornless version thornless variety of blackberries we are going to be able to grow here in their backyard we're going to be putting these things right here right between the two grapevines so this one's going to be bushing out and these things are going to be vining out so we are this is our one of our first attempts at growing blackberries here in our backyard and you saw in the other video this is our Thompson seedless we just hacked this thing we cut the cut the main artery right there we're not going to let this thing grow at all we want this to break down and, and let the bugs get to it we're not going to plant anything here 
because we want some serious growth with our red flame that this one kind of struggled last year because it just wasn't getting enough sun but now that we've cut this main one off that one is about five years old uh, we're going to be able to get this one in plenty of sun red flames need lots and lots of sun red flame great we've got our red zinvendel we are happy about this one we do get a lot of grapes off this one you can see in the other video where we prune this thing back to it we got a double cordon and man this thing is starting to wake up already this is nice we've got some buds here more buds there we are looking forward to some more red zinvendel grapes they do harvest in june so it's an early variety of grapes and we do enjoy those we are actually trying to propagate those as well right in here thickest growing branches and it looks like these things are just starting to wake up a little bit so hopefully we got some roots coming out of these and we'll have one two three four maybe five five more red zinvendels i know we're crazy we're just going to grow all kinds of things back here right here we got another variety of black grapes this is our triple crown blackberry it is just a sprout but it is taken off we uh we fertilized it with a little bit of blood meal and some bone meal and man this thing is just waking up nicely we are going to be planting it right about here so that we have blackberry grapes grapes and then blackberry uh, and then more grapes on that side so we're going to have all kinds of growth back here uh, all kinds of vines growing up against this wall no problem at all whatsoever uh, we did some more experimentation on some tomatoes we just literally pruned it off the main tomato plant put some rooting hormone and then just stuck them in the ground and this was about a month ago and these things are starting to take off so we know that there are some roots in there so we'll plant this in the ground as well and hopefully get some more tomatoes out here and then underneath the tomatoes we've got some more rose clippings these are our red rose clippings and we are all we did here was clip the branches put some rooting hormone and just stuck them in the ground we've got about three nodes stuck in the ground here and it looks like this one took we've already got some some little pushes of growth coming out already so that one looks really good this one too right inside there so oh yeah look at this big one right there so hopefully these got some roots down in there and we'll have some more rose bushes that's fun been talking about it but here is that infamous red barren peach we are keeping it we're going to keep it alive and we're just going to keep it for scion wood this is what the flowers look like and these do produce a really good sweet peach look how many look at the clusters of flowers on these things there's probably four four flowers right here just in one look how beautiful this thing is when this thing finally gets mature enough on our other peach tree these things are just going to be covered in flower but the rootstock did rot on this thing and so this thing is not going to be growing very much but we do want to keep keep some of this wood for scion wood to hopefully graft on our florida prince peach and our desert gold peach we definitely want to keep this tree going we won't be able to keep it on this rootstock but we will be able to propagate it which we are already but we want more that is our red barren peach right next to our red barren peach it is starting to wake up we have two thompson seedless grapes there's the first one we are pruning them in a cane style pruning we've got two of them here and they are on double trunks and they are just starting to wake up we pruned these a few weeks ago while things were still dormant and still cold today is supposed to be 80 degrees so and this is now the middle of march we are in spring and things are starting to wake up that is our Thompson seedless cane style pruning and right next to our Thompson seedless this is another red flame grape is our David Wilson red flame grapes and this thing is waking up like crazy it has got some really good growth man I just do love those Dave Wilson plants man they are top-notch I'm telling you they are some of the best we've ever had and heavy producers as well we will be printing this thing back in the fall we just want this thing to grow get some roots established we don't necessarily want any grapes off of this thing this year if we do yay if we don't i'm fine with that too but we definitely want to get this thing established in the ground and we'll be pruning this thing pretty soon we're just going to be choosing the more dominant wood to keep probably clip this thing here and have this thing growing straight up and then we'll choose which other 
more dominant wood to prune out and let this thing just grow straight up this year but that is our other red flame grape and right next to our flame grapes we've got blueberries oh my goodness we're blue growing blueberries here in the desert southwest bountiful blue we are looking forward to this we did plant this in a pot we want to control the soil and we want to control the nutrients we did plant this in uh, very acidic types of soil i'll leave that video i'll be posting that video shortly on how we did this uh, but be sure to follow us and watch that video and see how you can grow and be successful at growing blueberries here in the desert southwest of arizona blueberries yes that's awesome let's see how successful we can get of growing blueberries properly here in the desert southwest by just following all the rules we're not going to leave this thing in the sun during the summertime blueberries do not like direct sunlight especially in arizona holy cow this is our bountiful blue blueberries so you can see we've made a lot of changes things are growing you made it all the way to the end of the video might as well just give this video a like we do appreciate that be sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell icon follow us we talk about all kinds of things on this channel of how to grow and be successful growing your fruit trees grapevines blackberries we're super excited about those if you have any questions comments concerns suggestions leave them down in the comments box we'd love to hear from you we've got updates every single week on this channel we try to get the videos out every thursday so be sure to follow us we talk about everything on this channel from fertilizing to watering to propagating to grafting to planting to removing to adding and pruning just about everything it takes to be successful fruit tree and grapevine growers and blackberry growers as well so for my family to yours thanks for watching